shouting, keep shouting, you're just embarrassing yourselves, quite honestly. You've given up governing. Absolutely giving up governing. Regrettably, Mr Speaker has inserted himself into that row with today's decision and undermined the confidence of this House in being able to rely on its long-established standing orders to govern its debates. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I know that the Speaker is a servant of this House and that he takes his responsibilities to us extremely seriously. It is that duty towards us and our rights as members in this place that commands our respect of him. We all have obligations in this place to ensure that all views can be expressed and that individual members and parties of all colours and sizes can have their say. As a member of the government benches, sometimes that is difficult on opposition day debates. Motions are always deliberately confected to try and engineer the greatest possible backlash against members. But we, on this side of the House, have never asked that the procedures of this House be upturned in order to mitigate against such measures. Even when we have faced extreme abuse. Mr Speaker has stated in the decision that he has taken today and that he is entitled to take that he wished for all propositions on the order paper to be put to the House. However, this decision has raised temperatures in this House on an issue where feelings are already running high and it has put honourable and right honourable members in a more difficult position. It also appears from the advice of his clerk that the decision is taken against the long-standing and established processes and procedures of this House, and that the consequences may be that government is not able to respond to Opposition Day motions, and as such, the government does not have confidence that it will be able to vote on its own motion. For that reason, the government will play no further part in the decision this House takes on today's proceedings. I would like to stress that the government's position on Israel and Gaza remains unchanged, as my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, outlined today. We want to see the fighting in Gaza end as soon as possible. We never again want to see Hamas carry out the appalling terrorist attacks that Israel was subject to. And we, un- we know that just calling for an immediate ceasefire now, which collapses back into fighting within days or weeks, is not in anyone's interests. We will be reiterating the government's position via a written ministerial statement. I fear that this most grave uh, matter that we are discussing today and this afternoon has become a political row within the Labour Party. And that the- And that, regrettably, Mr Speaker has inserted himself into that row with today's decision and undermined the confidence of this House in being able to rely on its long-established standing orders to govern its debates. Long-established conventions that should not be impaired by the current view of a weak leader of the opposition and a divided I would ask that the Speaker take the opportunity to reassure all honourable and right honourable members that their Speaker, our Speaker, will not seek to undermine those rights in order to protect the interests of particular members, and that future Opposition Day debates will not be hijacked in this way. And I say this, Madam Deputy Speaker, for the benefit of all members. I will take further points of order, but I think it will be helpful if I just explain 
that um, I thank the Right Honourable Lady um, for alerting me to her point of order. And just to explain that if the government is not going to move its amendment, the questions will be, first of all, on the current amendment, and secondly, on the motion itself, either as amended or in its original, original form. That, I just hope that is, I hope that is helpful. And it would be helpful if I could be heard. Thank you. Thank you. Order. Order. I am first of all, I'm first of, yes, I'm first of all taking a point of order from the shadow leader of the House, Lucy Pyle. Uh, thank, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. Obviously, I haven't had advance notice of the point of order from the, the leader. Um, so I'm, I'm responding uh, in terms today. Of course, we support what the Speaker was intending to do today. Well, hang on a minute. Hang, hang on a minute. Yeah, we support sit, sit the Speaker. We are, no. We are going to listen to the points of order. The Leader of the House was heard and the Shadow Leader of the House, and then I will come on to the Leader of the SNP. But I expect everybody to be heard with respect. Lucy Powell. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Sorry, I mean, last time I looked, the government benches had a majority in this House. Yeah, yeah. So if they don't like the amendments that are before them, exactly. they could vote this evening exactly. to defeat those amendments. But, but, but they have decided now not to, I understand, vote in those debates. So perhaps, perhaps we have to ask the question, whether or not they do still command a majority in this House uh, this evening, or whether they're trying to hide behind some other reason. Because keep shouting, keep shouting, you're just embarrassing yourselves, quite honestly. You've given up governing. Absolutely giving up governing. The Speaker is. Trying, I think, oh, Madam order, Deputy Speaker. Order. It's so bad just to be shouting the shadow leader of the House down. Members and right honourable members should think what they are doing in behaving like this. The shadow leader of the House will be heard, and I am sure she will be coming to the point of order that she wants me to rule on. A large number of members on this side of the House who wanted to express their view this evening in being able to vote for a motion in their name, for an amendment in their name. Okay? The They're still shouting me down, Madam Deputy Speaker. They have an amendment in their name, which they obviously clearly don't have the numbers to now get through this House because you are. It's astonishing, really, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the party opposite are now suddenly finding themselves standing in defence of the Scottish Nationalist Party, uh, something I didn't think I'd see very often. But if they've got the numbers to command a majority in this House, then they should vote for their amendment. The Speaker had every right to let us have a say on ours this evening, to have the maximum number of options. And the Leader of the House might want to consult the former Leader of the House, the member for North East Somerset, who said that the Speaker had in fact taken the right decision to make sure that the maximum number of options were available to this House this evening. So thank you very much, Rosa. Well, 